Coach PJ here. Do you ever find that there is not enough time in the day to get all of your critical, most important activities done? There are all kinds of things that are important that you want to execute on, but you end up giving in to day-to-day -day distractions, busyness, and firefighting. When that happens, you fail to take the time to think, be strategic, and plan, or to develop relationships with key team members, important clients, and strategic partners. You just go, go, go. How do you end up in this situation where you're just so unnecessarily busy? You're intelligent, you're running a business, you have a lot of skill and ability, but you still find yourself incredibly busy. If you want more information about how to avoid burnout as a business owner, check out my video up here. Very often, what is happening is that you're getting confused between what is important and what is urgent. Or you're forgetting about your important objectives because you are giving in to the constant urgent demands. If you've read The Seven Habits of Effective People by Stephen Covey, you know what I'm referring to. Covey talks about the concept of urgency versus importance and that the things that are most important for us to do often have very little urgency about them. We have a tendency to delay, procrastinate, and give in to the day-to-day -day demands and leave our important things for later. However, what happens is, as we leave our important items for later, they become more and more urgent. And eventually, they become urgent and important. In other words, they become a problem. You wanna make sure that you are making time for things that are important. And how do you get time back out of your day when you're already so busy and even over committed? It comes down to making some key decisions that you not, may not be currently making. Here's what I mean. Sometimes there are decisions which, if you were to make them, would preclude other activities from happening or many other decisions from being made. For example, maybe when you started your company, you hired somebody in an executive or leadership role and they were an A player. And as the business has grown and evolved, they have no longer grown and evolved with the business. The business has eclipsed them and the skill and ability that they need to execute at the A player status is just not there. Also, maybe this person has been there for a while, maybe one of your first employees or key hires. They're a great person, supportive of the team, positive, great to be around, a wonderful team member, but they're just not cutting it when it comes to performance. What might that mean for you? It could mean that you are slowing, they're slowing down the rest of the team. It could mean that they're dragging the team down or slowing down the performance and execution and causing them to not hit objectives. It could be that they're not hitting their own targets. It could be that they require more support from you in terms of handholding, training, coaching to get where they need to be, but they're just not progressing and they're using up more of your time. It could be that you or other people need to delegate to this individual, but there's a bit of fear that will, they're not gonna execute very well. In other words, they're taking up your time one way or another. What is the decision that needs to be made? Likely the decision that needs to be made is they need to be out of their role. That sounds logical, but move them onto another role in the company if there's a fit, or possibly give them an opportunity to pursue something somewhere else. That sounds very logical, and it's easy enough to make that decision. However, we have a bit of a stuck point here, and we have not made that decision, and why is that? We need to look at the two components of a decision. There's the logical and there's the emotional. The logical is what to do, and the emotional is what is going to happen when. Let's say for this person, we are going to move them on, but they have been a key staff member for a long time and you have a very good personal relationship. There could be some fear in injuring that relationship, fear of what will happen to this person if you move them on. In other words, you can have an emotional stuck point that keeps us from making the decision and keeps us staying too busy. Another example, for instance, is you have a key client. That client was in your previous target market that you used to serve, but you have really shifted your business model to serve a new target or in a new manner. And this past client is still there and your team has to execute on a new way of doing business with the new target and make exceptions for handling this other client. But you love them and they are great. They are probably not as profitable as you'd like them to be and they're chewing up your time and possibly your team's time, uh, possibly even coming to you with more challenges. What to do, right? We want to move move on, but that's the logic again. We need to look at the emotional. Why are we not pulling the trigger and letting them go and letting someone else serve them? Maybe they've been around for a long time, a great proponent and referral source for your business, 
Maybe they've been a fantastic supporter, a great revenue source, a good client all around, but they're just no longer in your target market. We could fear injuring the relationship with them or getting a reputation in the market too tarnished by letting them go. In other words, there's an emotional component. It could be fear-based. Why we are not making the decision to move the client on and get back all that time, reduce the complexity, be able to have our team execute well on the existing processes. As you can see, it is often that there are decisions that need to be made that we don't make. They keep us too busy. The key thing here is to identify what some of those things are in your business that are keeping you busy and what are the decisions behind them that is stopping you from having not made that decision that you need to make in order to get some of your time back. The second part of this is what are some of the emotional components to that decision that you are maybe not quite ready to deal with, that you will need to deal with. Another aspect is if you have some fear around making that decision, if there are unknowns, what do you need to know about the outcome and about what the outcome is going to be and how to handle it going forward? In other words, we need to be able to identify what is holding us back. Be able to understand the decision we need to make to get our time back. Work through the emotional component of that decision. Maybe push through a little bit of the fear, pull the trigger, and see what happens. I understand that today's lesson is easy to say, but hard to do. Leadership is not always easy or simple. If this is something that you're interested in learning more about, I have a number of ways to do that. We can jump on a quick call, we can get together for a coffee meeting, or if you know that this is absolutely what you need and you wanna get started right away, I offer a two hour complimentary coaching session where we'll dig deep into your business, identify the opportunities, and put a plan in place to go forward. If you got value from this video, like, subscribe, comment below. Leading real people to achieve real results your business profit. Until next time.